Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are starting a new program and building a new series of rockets to, well, finish out the first decade of the series. We're approaching 1959 now. The goal of this new program and the new series of rockets will be to put satellites in orbit that are capable of doing more than just being in orbit. And we're kicking off this episode with a simple suborbital hop that is testing the A-Series engine to get that reliability up, because I wasn't happy with the failure rate. Following that, we have a typical KX-5 flight as we've seen many times in the past. This one being a little bit special because it is Valentina Kerman's final flight before retirement. So that means that all four of our starting Kerbals are now going to be either retired or unfortunately with two of them lost and we are going to have to well hire some more kerbals for some future missions luckily we won't need that for a little bit but we do have a quite long list of kerbals that are awaiting being hired that were made by you guys in the Discord. And we are still accepting applications, so if you head over to my Discord, go to the Astronaut Complex channel, and, well, apply for your very own Kerbal if you want them to be in my hands. <laughs> We've got a 55, not, not 55, 50% 50 success rate so far, so that is totally up to you. Okay, so this brings us to the Sparrow 1. This is going to be trying to accomplish two contracts as well as putting something in orbit that is capable of collecting a bunch of science for us. I believe there's a micrometeorite detector. I think that's it. The two contracts we are attempting to complete are the atmospheric satellite and the first scientific satellite. And these are actually really, really easy contracts. And that just reminds me of what the other science experiment was. The geiger muller counter. That was a requirement for one contract in a specific orbit, which had a really, really broad range. It was just periapsis above this, apoapsis above this. And that's pretty much what the atmospheric science satellite was as well. Sparrow 1 sports a quite similar um, circularization maneuver as the Aero series did, where we have the avionics core behind the actual satellite, which detaches after spin stabilizing. Unfortunately, with the Sparrow 1, at least the first launch, I had been messing around with the center of mass of this and forgot to reset it before launching, so we had a quite, quite weird oscillation here. Luckily, we had more fuel than we needed, and we were able to complete the contracts anyway, if not just barely. And also, luckily, because of the way this was designed, I wasn't expecting that much of a tumble. However, the solar panels like that were able to keep this alive to keep, get us uh, three months experiments uh, worth of science because in Kerbalism, it takes time to complete certain experiments, and it took 90 days to complete the full experiments to get as much science out of the geiger muller counter and the micrometeorite detector. Here we have Sparrow 1.2 lifting off of the launch pad, and this rocket is looking to complete a communication satellite contract. This new design of the Sparrow Mark 1.2 
is solely due to the fact that I needed a lot of room for ComSat payload, which is the entire thing sticking out of the Sputnik. Unfortunately, this launch fell short of the contract, but it did have science experiments on board, and we were able to fully complete those to get a nice little chunk of science. Now, following the Sparrow 1 flights, we hired our first Kerbal for N9SA, and this comes from Cap Kirk on the Discord who applied. They applied James T. Kerman, and while well, some mishaps happened in the paperwork and the hiring process, and some technical issues ended up with us having James T. Kerman Kerman. So he is our first test pilot, our first, well, hopefully we can get him to space before he retires, but I'm not sure, so sure about that. The reason I decided to hire him right away is because Lucy from the Discord gave me a terrible, amazing idea on the Twitch stream that I had for this footage as an alternate idea to test rocket engines. Up to this point, we've been just sending rocket engines up into like a suborbital hop to get more data on them and to increase reliability, but the idea was sprung upon me to slap a bunch of them to the wings of an aircraft and test them that way. And so that's exactly what I did. This particular aircraft, the K-1, has been sitting in the editor since the beginning of the series and hasn't seen a flight one time until right now. Honestly, I was actually impressed with how, how well this was able to glide. The, the giant wingspan on this thing gave it a stall speed of like 35 meters per second. This particular flight was getting uh, reliability up on the AJ-10s since they had an initial failure rate of like 25%. And if I was going to slap these on, a, on an actual rocket, I didn't like those odds. So we sent the K-1B variant with the AJ-10s up like four different times to get data and that left us with a failure rate of, with some pre-flight data added, around a 10% failure rate. It's not the best, but it was within workable parameters for me. And this brings us to the launch of Sparrow 2 in the second half of 1959. Now this particular rocket is quite interesting in design. Four Caster 1 boosters and an A4 engine, that was one of the engines that came from the first node, like 1951, lift off of the pad to get two X405s, which are like four minute, five minute burning sustainer engines, high enough in the atmosphere to have a thrust to weight ratio above one. And from there, they pretty much carry us most of the way to orbit. On this particular launch, one of them ended up failing, but we had the upgraded variants of the X405, which happened to have three ignitions. And I didn't really plan on needing that, but I had remembered that in time to ignite the second one, which had initially failed, to get us back on track. So even with that failure, our, our mission is still nominal so far. After reaching a suborbital trajectory, our AJ-10 engine, which we've been flying strapped to the wing of a plane for a while to get reliability up, of course, will carry us all the way to orbit. And this, this rocket is essential. If this thing doesn't ignite with its sort of high failure rate, the mission is just a bust. It won't get to orbit. So far, so good for the circulation of these launches. It is also pretty much running the clock because we are very close to losing connection if you can't see in the top left, which really isn't that big of a deal. If we lose connection, it'll still hold the orientation it was still heading, but we might lose a little bit of efficiency.
plotting the maneuver to the moon was, well, it was more difficult for this launch than it will be in the future because I, you are capable of doing it with just timing and prograde alone, but I was messing with um, inclination as well with the maneuver, which isn't, isn't that efficient. So there's two places you can make the maneuver, the ascending or descending node, which were over Africa and a little west of Australia. Unfortunately, the Africa one, we have no connection, and the Australia one, we do. So there's really only one place to make the maneuver. And I ended up actually losing the footage for the next part, so I just pulled it off of my Twitch stream. And so we're also gonna bring this over to an older version of myself that was like a few days ago. Let's see if we can hit the moon or not. Now this is the uh, hit X at the right time where you don't get paid um, scenario here. So I have to cut thrust at the right time in order to have impact. And, oh, this is gonna be so close. <laughs> I couldn't decipher that! <laughs> oh, I could. I gave us too much, too much stuff here. Steps down one. Tolerance up one is what I needed because otherwise I couldn't see. Oh man. So it looks like we did end up missing the moon. However, we are able to get science from high orbit of the Earth for the first time in the series and bring that and transmit that back to Earth. 1959 is coming to a close, but we do have enough time for another Sparrow 2 flight. So next episode, we'll get to see if we can hit the moon before the end of the first decade. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.